Today's just gonna be a real short video on how you can modify your existing oil pump if you have a mechanical oil pump in your engine to get not only better oil flow, but also higher oil PSI. And of course, that's gonna be really necessary for this 3892 build now that we're going with some serious horsepower. But also because we're gonna be increasing some of the bearing clearances on this engine, we wanna make sure that we're getting a higher oil pressure and a higher oil flow, or as much oil flow as we possibly can from this stock mechanical oil pump. So stick around. Okay, so we're gonna continue this engine build uh, by working on this oil pump today. Now you can do this with your 3A92, but you can also do this with other engines, not just the 3A92. First thing is we're gonna pull off our pickup. I'm gonna go ahead and get this outer cover out of place. Okay, we're gonna set that aside for now. Now you've got, uh, this is the actual oil pump gears here. Okay, this guy spins, and that's what creates our oil pressure. Now there is a correct orientation of these gears. This is pretty easy to know because this outer lip here sets down inside. This outer gear, on the underside of it, there's two arrows, so we know which direction this goes back in. Those two arrows, one on that side, one on this side, they will seat down. Okay, so normally our cover is on here, our oil pickup's down here. So our oil is coming in through the pickup. It's getting pressurized in our gears. It's being drawn in through this chamber. Okay, then it gets pressurized into this chamber, and then it's shooting the pressurized oil through this hole, and then it comes out here, enters the, uh, the block as our pressurized oil. Now on the other side of this, this is the intake side. Okay, so this is the side that meshes here with the intake side. And so what's happening is there is a little plunger in here. This is what determines our oil pressure. This is like an oil pressure bleed off. So the oil comes down, it then forces that piston down and relieves our oil pressure back over to this chamber. This section here is kind of like our waste gate. Depending on how much tension we have on this, this determines how much total PSI we have going through the engine. And this, of course, will determine our volume. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here with my tool, I'm gonna route this out a bit. And then over here, what we need to do is we wanna increase the tension on our plunger AKA our oil waste gate to allow a higher total PSI. This is where the oil travels through is this little area here. It comes in here, takes a turn, and then goes back out there. So we really wanna be very careful that, we know that we're not drilling this out so much that we're weakening any of this material. Okay, we just wanna go a hair larger than where it is right now. So I'll measure this so you guys get an idea. I'm measuring this at about just shy of 12 millimeter, it's 11.93. This one's 11.49. And what I've got here is this is a half inch drill bit. That guy's gonna measure about 12.69. So really not that much bigger. Maybe about one mil larger. And we're just going to very carefully open this guy up. With this, you can see very easily where the progress is made. So we've gotten all the way down to the bottom there which is what we wanted, just to sink it down enough. So that's looks pretty good there. I'm gonna drill out from this side, being very careful not to mar this mating surface. So we just wanna do the same thing coming in from this side. Yeah, you can kind of see where the bit is now just touching the back side of that port, the original port. So, we get that side opened up, we got this side opened up. I'm gonna come in here with some sandpaper rolls, and just like I would be doing, you know, a port job on an engine head, I'm gonna clean that up. What I wanted to do here was to get this area smoothed out. So I did come in here with a little bit of carbide. You don't have to use carbide. You can see I dulled up the tip of this, smoothing this out pretty well. But you can just use your bit and just knock down. There was a wall right here. Just wanted to knock that wall down. If you're gonna use the carbide, just use extreme caution. They're so, so aggressive when you're dealing with aluminum. But uh, I didn't even, you can see, I didn't even really 
remove a lot of the material. I left the aluminum here to be pretty thick, but I just cut down the wall. Now that oil can flow real nicely through there. There's really no reason to do much of that on this side. This is the area where the oil is going to be flowing across here, so it really doesn't matter as much that there's a lip here. Now if the oil were flowing this direction, we would want to knock down this lip right there. But since the oil flow is from this way, we've already smoothed out that transition from this side, so really no reason to get crazy on this side. Now for porting and polishing heads, I get these really great buffing bits here. They come in different grits, and they're excellent for doing a port and polish, but as you can see, they're just way too large to fit into something like that, in these small little oil passages. So I don't really have a way to smooth that off as much as I would like to. The main thing here is we wanted to open up that diameter a little bit and smooth over these corner edges. So that should get us a little bit better flow characteristics from the oil pump. See that little red RTV back there? blocking some of that screen. Because this guy's plastic, it's kind of like a throwaway piece, so I'm just gonna replace this entirely. There you go, you can kind of see that where that oil ring sits. This is the piece we want to be larger, so that way when that oil float comes through here, it's not crashing into this lip. So I am gonna bore this out just a little bit, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna smooth out this sharp edge here. So there it is. It's not the prettiest <laughs> I've ever done, but I did it in, I don't know, three or four minutes. So now, of course, the main thing we want to do is we want to increase our oil pressure. We don't want to just get a little bit better flow characteristic. We actually want to increase the pressure. So what we're going to do here is grab this guy. We're going to have to crack that nut loose. Probably I should have told you guys to do that before we pulled any of this off. So we're just going to Crack that baby loose. I'll go ahead and crack that guy loose. Stand by. Like I was saying, crack that baby loose. We're just gonna take this guy out. Don't drop it, there are springs and things in there. So this guy comes off. The way this works is just really simple here. This is just, you have this oil piston here. It's gonna drop in there. You got your spring for tension and you got your retainer on the end of it. This is the simplest way to do this is we're just going to shim this a little bit. So we're creating again, a slightly stronger pressure and a slightly higher PSI with the oil pump. I've just got two washers here. Make sure that they are not too big and they're not too small. What I mean by that is they are large enough to where the bottom of the spring is going to rest on the washer, but they're also small enough to where we can fit the washers down, right down inside or end cap like that. So now when it comes to deciding how much you wanna take up space here shim wise, here's what I would recommend. If you're wanting to do mild modifications and you are sticking with the stock bearing clearances, I would recommend that to increase between two to five PSI that you go with one shim that would be equivalent to about 25 thousandths is one of these washers. Here's the reason why I'm using two washers and I'm shimming this thing to about 55 thousandths. My finished engine is gonna have larger clearances because we're running so much power. Uh, because they're larger, I'm also using a thicker oil. The factory, you guys, you Mirage guys will correct me, but I believe the factory oil calls for like an 020 or maybe a 520, something along those lines. With the turbo, I was running a 10W30. And then because I'm going with the larger bearing clearance, that is going to reduce my oil pressure slightly because I'm going with the larger bearing clearance. So my system may not necessarily be the way that you'll want to run this on your system, but I would recommend is that you just use the one shim and that should give you between two to four more PSI. In my case, 
I'm still probably going to have about, at the end of the day, between two to, to six uh, PSI greater, but I'm doing that only because I'm using a larger tolerance on all of my engine bearings. All right, so we're pretty well wrapped up here. Let me show you guys the finished product. So you can see how we've opened up that chamber. So we've smoothed all that out real nice. And then of course, making the change to our spring here will increase our oil pressure. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video. And of course, we're doing the full build series for this entire engine, taking it from the 180 horsepower we had now up to between the three to 350 horsepower to the wheel. So I would invite you to continue to follow along through these parts, even if you don't own a Mirage, you don't have a 3A92, the things that you're going to see me do and the sciences that I'm going to apply to how I'm gonna get that kind of horsepower power out of this engine, it can be applied to any automotive engine. So keep watching those videos. Thank you guys for joining me on Dirt Gear TV. I'm Rick and I'll see you guys in the next one.